Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old time radio station since the bombs fell. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime on a bridge stories and other old world medias. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all this media. Now, without further commentary, we're starting off with Frontier Gentlemen, a late 1950 story collection by John Denton. At Little Cottonwood Creek, I saw a man whose life wasn't worth $10,000, not even to himself. Frontier Gentlemen. an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a Someone gun, there? he lives and becomes you. a part of the violent years of in thing. the new territories. In just a moment, we will bring you this latest report from the Frontier Gentlemen. Do you like uh, color in your news? So Do you want the sidelights and the inside stories on the day's headlines? And the program for you is The World Tonight, broadcast seven nights a week on most of the CBS radio stations. The World Tonight is the program that gives you the plus features in the news, the inside stories, the interesting interviews with personalities in the news, and the vital record testimony from important hearings and investigations. <laughs> Certain incidents take precedence over others. Therefore, I have postponed writing of several unusual occurrences which took place in Dakota Territory in order to speak of the final chapter in the matter of Bell Siddons, alias Madame Verdi, Archie McLaughlin, and Boone May. It began about a month after McLaughlin and his band had attempted to hold up the Boone May was a peace officer in Deadwood, one of the most tenacious men I have ever met. He was determined to capture McLaughlin dead or alive, and I knew that he suspected Bell Sittons of being in partnership with the wanted man. The fact that I was well acquainted with the lady put me under the same shadow of suspicion. I had met Miss Sittons for lunch in Deadwood House, a comparatively respectable place. I thought she looked rather pale, tired. Have you heard from Boone May? In the past couple of days, no. I wondered. What's the matter, Bell? Nothing. McLaughlin? I don't know why I should care. It makes no sense. Have you heard from him? No. Do you know if he's still holding out in the timber? I don't know. And you're worried? Yes. He's not a good man. Feeling this way about him, I know, only caused me unhappiness. But you love him. I suppose I do. Do you think he loves you? In his way. Is that enough? If I could be with him, it would be. Well, why don't you go to him? No. Boone May is having me watch. I took the chance once, not again. Mm. Hasn't McLaughlin tried to reach you? Send a message? Two weeks ago. A note. That he's with me in San Francisco. The place we talked about. I don't know. That's what I'm afraid of. I don't know what to do, whether to go. I hate this. Stupidity behaving like a schoolgirl. First love, it's nonsense. Is it? It's interfering with my work. To be a good gambler, one must be able to think clearly. I can't. <laughs> Perhaps this is the time I should play 21 with you. Jeremy, what do you think I should do? Um, at this moment, look pleasant and unworried. Hmm? Good afternoon, madam. Hey, Billy. Yeah, Thank you. I've been looking Thank for you. Thank you so much. Will you sit down, Mr. May? Well, now, I'll take you, you someplace safe. I just want to go got home. Piece of news I want to find my mom and dad. Oh, we got one of the fellas was with McLaughlin, night of the holdup. Oh. Then let's go find Which your one? home. 
Brown. Thanks. Johnny Brown. I live in Quincy. Silly son or of a gun. Oh, beg your pardon, to. ma'am. He comes waltzing into town, goes know, down to Maggie's there. place, and one of my boys sees so him and picks him up. It's all blown uh, up. What about McLaughlin? Oh, well, we got out of Johnny Boy, found out where they was holed up. Went out to fetch him, but they already hightailed it out of there. You see, there's McLaughlin and Smith and Billy Mansfield. Any idea where they've gone? Not yet a while, but I'll get them. Oh, you wouldn't have heard any talk around, would you, madam? No. Why should I? Well, now I'll tell you why, ma'am. It seems that Johnny Brown was night a sack his saddle a month back when a lady comes along and digs a hunk of lead out of him. Uh, Johnny Brown says the lady was you. He's a liar. Well, now, madam, right now it'd be his word against yours. And, well, I ain't so sure which one to stand up in trial. I don't see much sense in arresting you for a merciful act that you done. But I could for not informing the law where a wanted man was hiding out. The man's a liar. I'd never even heard of him. Now, he says different. But it ain't worth arguing. Now, now this Johnny Brown, he done a lot of talking. And he figures McLaughlin's going to pick up the buried loot he's been collecting. He'll be ahead for San Francisco. Johnny says he's got a lady friend in San Francisco. Cute kid. Is he for sale? You ever hear tell of such a thing, Mr. Madam? McLaughlin never confided in me to that extent. Well, now I thought maybe he had. You and him being kind of close. Hey, don't walk away. What do you think, Ken? I don't. Of course, you now, of maybe that. McLaughlin's still around. Wait, go on the Before he goes. Now, I'd surely take it as a kindness if you'd tell me if he shows up. But I guess that's asking too much now, isn't it? Mr. Kendall, please excuse me. <laughs> that there was a mean, mad woman. Would you blame her? You know the way she feels about McLaughlin. Well, sure I do. I just want to see how she'd take the news. Well, you've tried that before. You know what, there's a fact, Kendall. Except in uh, maybe you noticed that I had better luck this time. You still think she's working with McLaughlin? I tell you she's not. Well, she's his woman. She already broke the law going to him when he asked her to take the bullet out of Brown. Hmm. You went too, Kendall. You knew? I told you, that there Johnny Brown, he talked like a Texan. If now I was mine to, you know I could arrest you for that. I imagine you could. I just kind of figured that you and me thought together. Now, why, why didn't you tell me you was with her when she went out to fix up that Johnny Brown? Two reasons. First, I'm a newspaper correspondent. It was my job. I wanted to protect my story. Why ain't your job to protect outlaws? No. It? But I gave my word. That's the second reason. Two of the men wanted to make trouble. Mm. They weren't going to let us leave the shack that night. They might have come to shoot him. I don't condone what McLaughlin's done. I don't like what he is. But Madame Verdi could have been killed. If he hadn't taken our side, that's why I gave my word. You know, that word of yours, that broke the law. Yeah, it's a good thing, Candle, that I got it. Because, you know, if and I didn't, I could have you making hair bridles for the next five years. Long sentence. Yeah. Now, that McLaughlin, he got maybe $10,000 or better cast away somewhere. Uh, it's company money he stole in gold. You know, I gotta get it back. Now, if I can get the money along with McLaughlin, that there'd be a real good thing. Savvy? I gather that either Madame Verdi or I am supposed to know where it's hidden. Yeah. I don't. Hmm. I doubt whether she does. They're gonna shoot well, I might her. I you don't. I ain't so sure about her. Tell me, was that true about McLaughlin going to San Francisco? That's what Johnny Brown says. Of course, now, I don't figure he'll ever make it. I'd say he's got a fair chance. You sitting here, he's riding west. Uh, Cheyenne. He stopped there for a while. That Johnny Brown was supposed to catch up with him there. And Johnny won't, but I will. Uh, would you mind uh, taking a longish ride with me, Kendall? You see, that way you can do a writing chore and I can keep an eye on you. They're gonna shoot us! You afraid I'd tell her where we're going? Wouldn't you? Probably. That's what I mean. Come on. Amsterdam, Joan Alexander, Bill Balance, and Jim Backus 
will make up the panel of experts later today on CBS Radio's lively guessing game, Says Who. What makes the prospect pleasing is the fact that this famous foursome, taken one at a time or collectively, are all people of high good humor and wit. For fun and excitement, join them on CBS Radio later today as most of these same stations present Says Who. Boone May accompanied me while I went to my hotel to pack my saddlebags. And an hour later, we took the stage out of Deadwood for Cheyenne in Wyoming Territory. There were just the two of us. And the only stops we made during the entire journey were the meals from the stations at which the horses were chained. But in spite of his precautions, Boone May hadn't counted on Madame Verdi. While we were making our way to Cheyenne, she had not been idle. The lady had heard of our hurried departure from Deadwood and found out the reason for it. A few hours after we left, a deputy peace officer more interested in money than law paid her a visit. His name was Harry Morgan. What's your proposition, ma'am? Would you like to earn a thousand dollars? Yes, ma'am. You've heard of Archie McLaughlin? Yes, ma'am, I've heard. They say he's in Cheyenne. That's what I hear tell. Boone May's going out to pick him up. Yes, ma'am. If he takes him, he'll bring him back to Deadwood. You want that happen? Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Are you in A there? A man named Kendall's with me. Really? They left really? by stage. You reckon they'll come back same way? Yes. You asking a lawman like me to stop that Son? stage and set an outlaw really like you? Archie McLaughlin free? Yes. You know, it's me. It's really Lockers me. Got better than 10, oh my God! Here, so you we thought important. you were dead. No. What happened to you? You're all burned up like me. Those boo may don't catch me. Worry about it, Billy. Be a long Your ride to Cheyenne. I don't care what you look like. We still love you. Ride, I love you too, Mom. Two thousand. I missed you guys. If Archie's in the coach so and you get him out. Thank huh? you for bringing us back, you little boy. How come turn you into And saving us from that man. I know you won't. That's why I asked you to come here. Mm. I'm glad we found you. Here. It'll take some man. Take this. Boom I Mike wish I had more to give you, but we don't no have much. A man alone. Figure four others would be safe along with me. That's up to you. Gotta get some more Ten thousand don't go far. Split up between five. Twenty-five hundred, then. That sounds fair. When will you leave? As soon as I round up the boy. All right. Can't go outside and play. If you get All to him. Dead. Tell him to go to San Francisco. It's almost like being Tell him I'm meeting there. Yes, ma'am. One more thing. Do you know what Mr. Kendall looks like? Yes, ma'am. He's that newspaper fellow. I see. He's not to be hurt. Well, no telling what happened to him shooting, man. Boone May ain't likely to give up McLaughlin so easy. You, uh, you reckon you better get me some money before I go to the boys at Moss? Now. The rest will be on deposit for you at the bank. Collectible if Archie's free. Hmm. I reckon it's better if you give me 2500 now. If I don't get McLaughlin, or if Boone may ain't caught it, so I'll give you back the 2000 I spare <laughs> No. You don't trust me? No. <laughs> yeah, I see. You ain't got no trouble. I don't trust you, Sammy Davis, so you've got to trust me. you got to if you want your it's Archie like back. back in that fridge. Wait here. I'll get your money. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I says to her, you got to if you want your Archie back. And she hands over the whole thing, 2500 Now, boys, seems to me we're working mighty cheap to take a chance like getting a prisoner away from Boone May. I ain't all fired anxious to get in a powder burning contest with Boone. I seen him use artillery. He ain't the fastest, nor he ain't the slowest by long way. Against five of us, Boone ain't no bigger fool than another man. Besides, we ain't gonna take that big a chance. If he got too many for us, we'll take to the two to split the dinero, let it go at that. But if we can take He's a talk. I hear tell Archie's got 10,000 or more here, or maybe carrying on him. Worth saving any man for. Any man oh, thousand. Which, along with this 2500 makes fair fighting with you. What do you say? Well, now, wait a minute. How's about Boone May? He recognizes us. He'll be gunning for us. Pinky, wasn't you never a vigilante? 
Mask, we'll wear masks. Now, you got any more food questions, ask them later. Well, travel light, boys. I'll meet you back here half hour. These conversations, plans we knew nothing about as our stage rolled on towards Cheyenne. Boone May seemed uncommonly sure about his chances of capturing McLaughlin. At the time, I didn't share his optimism, which, as it turned out, was a mistake on my part. I should have known better than to underestimate the <laughs> very thorough man. A gentleman of sentiment, our man about music, is Mitch Miller on CBS Radio. Sunday evenings, he gathers under himself a group of showboats and equal and talent for a bull session on the train. Mitch and his friends do their talking right before CBS Radio's microphone, where everyone can hear them. Tonight and every Sunday, over most of these stations, get the inside story on show business from The Mitch Miller Show. To report that Archie McLaughlin and his two companions were captured after a bitter gun battle would make colorful reading, but such was not the case. When we arrived in Cheyenne, the men were already in custody of the Cheyenne Marshal. Boone May had telegraphed ahead. And four hours after receiving a message, McLaughlin, Mansfield, and Smith were arrested while drinking a toast to freedom. They were put in irons, and accompanied by one other Cheyenne peace officer, we started on a return journey by stage to Deadwood. Be passing through Fort Laramie directly. And maybe you boys like to take your last look. I'll be coming this way again. If you do, you're gonna be an old, old man, McLaughlin. A charge against you's gonna add up to more years than any man's got a right to live. Bet you wish they'd hang us, huh, Boom? Maybe you deserve to, man, Phil, but the law is the law. And the law says you're gonna stand trial for robbery. You get a fair shake in Deadwood. Robbery ain't a hanging crime like in some places. How come you're along with him, Kendall? I think Mr. May was afraid that Madame Verdi and I would ride to Cheyenne to warn you. How is she? Better than she'll be when she sees you like this. Oh, you've won. You've got your man. Why rub salt in the wound? Hmm. What'd you do with the money you had, McLaughlin? What money? That 10,000 or more? Oh, ain't no use playing ignorant. Half of Deadwood knows about that loot. It'll go easier at the trial if you turn it back to the company. Sorry, Boone, I got all kinds of plans what to do with it. We ain't gonna do you no good in the hood. What's the matter, Boone? You gonna lose reward money if Archie don't mess up? The law will go easier on you. That's what I'm saying. You know, hearing you talk through my gut, Boone. These ways I don't mind admitting I'm a no good Highline rider. Only difference between us is you hide behind a badge for your kind of thing. You lie, McLaughlin. I never told you. Get this here peace officer to tell you about the times he shut an eye when a gold shipment's been here. Get out of that coach or we'll make wolf meat out of it. <laughs> it's a hold-up, boom. We got you on both sides and behind. Get out, slow hands. Way high, you hear? What's the matter, Boone? Ain't you gonna fight back? Man's a fool to take our money can handle. There's too many of them. Look, Tessa. The orders come down straight from Captain Wes. Where? Clint has the command I'm here. Right glad that's to see just you, how boys. it is. Archie if you keep running your mouth off, he's, he's gonna make an example of you to show that he's still in charge. Taking me and my pal and what do you in? think he picked you to deal you with those scorps down at the Super Duper That's Mart? right. Thank you. Now, maybe you Thank got away you with that shit yeah. back when you were running with raiders. But gunners stick to the chain of command. Besides, we wouldn't have been able to take Quincy without him. And you and you wouldn't have that sweet right power there. over Driver, So get over step it. Step on that box. You, Glopper, and other two. Get over here on the tree. Don't seem like no proper hold up to me. I have an idea it isn't. That's just fine, McLaughlin. Oh, that voice. We ain't gonna waste time. I swear I heard it before. Might be coming along the trail. Cup you boys get that rope over that limb yonder. A uh, necktie mm. party for Boone May? You won't see no weeping from me, mister. You ain't got it straight, McLaughlin. It's like this. We're vigilantes, see? Law and order, that's us. 
We know all about you. We know what you've done. Why are you going back to death with us? If we think it ain't right, you should get off without paying for your sins. So, McLaughlin, if you're carrying that $10,000 or whatever, you hand it over right now. I ain't carrying nothing. Boom, may you take it off then? No, he never had it. Now, look, you want to help the law, that's just fine, Shut but that ain't the way to... straight to Bell Siddons. She'd been asleep, but very young, fragile. She listened dry-eyed. He didn't tell? Shit. No. Shit. I wish he had. Gunner! It's my fault. I wanted to. You knew what was going to happen. Those men? I sent them. I killed them. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, you tell him? Yes. Oh, that's good. I'm glad you did. A fellow like you knows how to do a thing like that. Yes, I'm very good at things like that. Well, how, how about a drink? I could use one after the ride. Well, I'll see you. Did she say anything about where the money was hid? No, nothing. Yeah, too bad. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Jack Crucian, Gene Lansworth, Harry Bartell, Richard Perkins, and Jack Boyle.
Deadwood, I learn that a man will risk anything on what he considers to be a good gamble. Frontier Gentlemen. an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. In just a moment, we will bring you this latest report from the Frontier Gentleman. Nobody's a stick in the mud where CBS News is concerned. On features like The World Tonight, Listeners, go right along to wherever the news is happening. Hear eyewitness reports from CBS News overseas correspondents. Enjoy lively interviews with the very people who are making the news night after night as most of the same CBS radio stations present The World Tonight. Now, starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. In my wanderings, I have found that a horse is an indispensable method of transportation. It is true that a great deal of my traveling has been accomplished through the use of riverboat, train, and stagecoach. But these conveyances traverse only a minute portion of the tremendous area which makes up the states and territories of the American West. Therefore, in order that I might not be so completely dependent upon the relative convenience of public transport, I decided to purchase an animal. I learned that there were only two horse dealers of any consequence in Deadwood. My informant was a gentleman named Scotty Rennie. We had recently met over a beer on Dolan's Good Luck Saloon. He put it this way. Now, uh, I reckon you want a real Sunday horse, Kendall, not one of them cut-back flea-bitten whistlers. Uh, definitely a Sunday horse. Well, like I say, there's two horse traders in this here town. One's Fitch Foreman, the other Wolf Hawk Simmons. They both got plenty of critters, they'll sell you. Of course, I ain't saying one got better than t'other, but if it was me, I'd go down to Wolf Hawk Simmons. Yeah, he ain't likely to see me find as Fitch Foreman would. You being a tenderfoot and all. Oh, that's nice to know. Ain't nothing. Where would I be likely to find, Mr. Simmons? It ain't but a shorter straddle down the road. If I ain't got nothing better to do, I'll amble on over with you. Might be I can help you find yourself a time. Most great. Good news. Want to buy yourself a horse, mister? That's right. You come to the right place. That's what I told him, Wolf. Oh. And ain't told me the truth, Squatty. <clears throat> In fact, uh, what kind of animal you reckon will fit? Well, there's a decent bit of it. That's your own? Oh, no. no, not unless you plan to do some day herding. He's a churn head. Kind of bow windy, too. No, 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 not him. Now, <clears throat> I got me a real sweet little gun over here. He ain't sizable. Not much over 14 two hands, but he's a long horse, if that's what you're wanting. Long? Now he'll go, mister, and he'll keep going till you say stop. And you gotta say it good and loud. Yeah, that's a new one, ain't he, Woo Don't recollect seeing him around. Yeah, coming yesterday. Fella sold him cheap to pay poker loss. That, mister, is a lot of horse. Hmm. Rather broad in the beam, wouldn't you say? You mean the big bottom? Oh, sure, that's the nature of him. You stick my word, mister, that's one long horse. I had him out this morning. You got a fast walk and easy lope, and you get you where you're going. Won't give out like a lot of these fancy foot and foot Tallman try to sell you. Uh, how much will uh, You talking for the man here or for yourself, buddy? Maybe I've got a anchor. Fifty dollars. Uh, I'm afraid that's a little high for me. Hmm, what's your offer? I wouldn't give you twenty. I'll tell you straight, war. I ain't asking you, Spotty. Listen, mister, maybe you'd better go on over and have a look, see what Fitch Coleman's got. Now you shut your mouth, Squatty, or I'll stomp your head in. Trouble is, you don't know a good piece of horse flesh in my hog. This here critter's worth better than 50. And how come if he's so good you want to sell him? I'm in the horse trade business. Not no hotel for Bronx, that's how come. Now, mister, I'll tell you why. 
like this was in your stable, Tallman. Oh, you're darn right, Woha, unless we're going to use it for bear hunting. Oh, yeah? You uh, want to make a little bet, you fellas? What kind of a bet? That there son got more guts and gold than anything in Deadwood. You loco, Woha. That ain't no bet. That's an old man with a saddle slipping. Hey, <laughs> you're afraid to bet, sure. Uh, no, you just... Tallman, you're afraid to bet, sure. Now, hold sure. on, Woha. You've been this hunk of crow bait what this here poor fella just bought off of you as a better horse than any horse in Deadwood. Any horse? That's what I'm a saying. You want to put money on it. That's what a bet's fur, ain't it? No, nah, just You want to bet against Lobo? Oh, if he's going to do that, I'd like a piece of that bet myself. I said any horse in Deadwood. How much? Don't matter to me. Big or as little as you want. All right. You stay right there, Lobo. I'm going to get Pat. I'll be right back. Now, just one more. Oh, oh, you oh, banded oh, one herd of sheep too many. Well, even that frog walking bronco mine can beat the tar out of this puny critter. I said any horse, buddy. Uh, you are going to race my horse? That's what I'm aiming to do. Well, you got yourself another bet, Woha. I sure hope you've got enough money, because you're going to be betting against everybody in Deadwood. I'm going out to raise me a stake. Ain't no backing out now, and you're a witness, Kendall. So long. <laughs> The voice is familiar, but can you remember the name? That's the problem confronting our star-studded panel of experts each Sunday as most of these same stations present Says Who. Says Who is CBS Radio's fast-moving guessing game with Henry Morgan as host. Add the rapid-fire FRT of Morgan and his panel to the excitement of guessing the identity of the mystery voice, and you've got at least two barrels of fun rolling tonight and every Sunday night on CBS Radio's Says Who. In Woha Simmons' saddle room, I began to understand why the old man had been goaded into making success. At that point, neither of us had any idea of the magnitude of what he had done. He went into great detail concerning the rivalry between his stable and that of Fitch Coleman. The fact that Coleman, without a doubt, possessed the fastest horse in the area. I was sympathetic, but I said, I don't exactly blame you, but I can't see the point in even holding the race. Well, one thing can make it easy for you, Kendall. Sell me back the animal. And you're racing yourself? I think it. But you know he can't win. I never said that. But you for sure he can't win no short horse race. He ain't that kind. But nobody said nothing about a short race. Now listen, Kendall. I've been around for this hunt since I can remember. That enemy of yours is hard like rock. Our hands have stolen to me. He told me that that horse can go 30 miles in a day and never be winded. There's that kind of racing, too. That's what I got in mind. 30 miles? Near as we have it. There's a good time. I reckon he can walk the legs off of anything that tries to go against him. You really think he's that good? Well, I open my mouth wide enough, he better be. It'll cost me all I got if he ain't. I suppose they won't agree to a race of that Oh, I ain't worried about that. What happens if I lose a something, he said? 
Make a small bet. You can afford that, can't you? If you got ears, Kendall, I told Bill Tallman I'd bet little or big. Didn't make no difference. Old man Tallman hears that, he's going to make it big. He's been looking for a way to put me out of business for a long time. In this would do it. How long would it take from here to Shire? Well, a man knows the right road. Short cuts. Pardon me, four, sir. Pack a quint. I just want to say it's a good thing you came by my corner. That's hard riding. Could a horse stand it? Good to meet you, Mr. Right. Quinn. Mr. Quinn, what are we, strangers? Bigger Mr. Quinn's my father's name. I'm Parker. Twelve hours a day. Plenty of rest in between. Okay, Parker it is. Hey, look at that. We're friends now. Right, I'm Parker we'll and you. You, you are sir. Why not? He is my horse. Look. Because you're obviously a busy, dangerous, and exceedingly intelligent person, I'm going to cut right to you. I'm going to make you a proposition so spectacular, you can't possibly say no. You ready? I'm ready. Every day you're going to buy stuff. Food, ammo, beer, whatever. And you pay with caps. Caps. Bottle caps. What is this, fucking 1612? A bunch of losers blow up the world 200 years ago, and we have to lug around piles of bottle caps? Are you friggin' kidding me? So that's why I've been working with every single shop in the Commonwealth to get rid of caps. Introducing right you, the only form of currency you you'll ever need, the charge card. Five for me, too. Who are you? Interesting Five idea. Interesting. A work of arts. Interesting. This is friggin' revolutionary. It's super simple. Part. You Not give me 110 caps right now, and I give you this charge card. Accept it at any store in the Commonwealth. Up to 100 caps. The 10 extra caps is my service fee. So what do you say? Want one? about the rules of the race? Oh, you the poor may lord a cowboy bought that budget? And this isn't some kind of scam. Right. I can't believe you just asked me that. Nothing worse than what, I'm a charlatan? You think I got this far in life by ripping people off? You said I'm an entrepreneur. Mr. This no is as real as it gets. Good. The race starts here. Sounds good. I'll take one. Awesome. I'll take your money, and you get the charge card. Great doing business with you. Tell your friends, pocket Quinn. Same corner every day. Great, Todd. Race starts Saturday morning, 6 o'clock. Gotta be in Cheyenne no later than next Thursday. Uh, make that Wednesday midnight. Yeah, Wednesday midnight. Four days. Seven, twelve. Four days, eighteen hours. Anybody comes in after that loses. Well, suppose we all come in after that. Then all bets are off. Nobody wins. Now, uh, ain't no horse can make a run like that without proper feed and the like. Every rider can have somebody along to help. Helper drives a buckboard carrying feed, bedding, and stuff. A man can take any route he pleases between here and Cheyenne. Any he wants. Finish line's at the railroad depot. You gotta get somebody to ride ahead to Cheyenne to be there at the finish. Don't tell the mayor. He'll go. Uh, who's riding your nag, Woha? I am. Kendall. <laughs> now, which you figure's gonna drop dead first, the dude or his horse? <laughs> Might as well pay up right now, Woha. <laughs> hey! You ride your horse, Tommy. My son is who? That's right, Fab. Now I'll go along with the buckboard. Uncle Fish, you reckon you can find me a helper? Well, sure, Hunker. We'll pick you up. Well, boys, I'm going out and make me a couple of side bets. This ought to be the easiest money I ever did make. You're absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> The runner in town can't hope to keep up with the Mitch Miller Show because every Sunday night when it comes your way on most of these same stations, the Mitch Miller Show covers that part of the entertainment world that stretches from the bright lights of Broadway to the big lights of Hollywood. For another all-out, all-star variety edition of the Mitch Miller Show tonight, join us right here at the Star's Address when Mitch puts out the welcome ad again. <laughs> Friday midnight. Wood on the outcome of the race. Gamblers were giving short odds on Fitch Tolman's horse Lobo, slightly longer on Squatty Reynolds' Blue Nose, six to one on Cousin Tom Tolman's Sorrel Jimmy Go, and well, the odds on my horse were astronomical. An hour before the start of the race, Warhaw Simmons went over our plans. The little dun horse stood quietly by my side. Now, remember, rain or shine, these mules of mine pulling the buckboard, they're going to do a steady five miles every hour. Don't you fret if it takes a little while to come up with me. I want time to scout ahead. There's been some rain south of ways. Maybe I can find out a trail for you to ride. Good. 
I remember, it doesn't matter what the others do, keep him at a walk. Oh, once in a while, let him lope, but easy. Okay, and you got a name for the animal? As a matter of fact, man. What did his last owner call him? <laughs> Dogs if I know. Well, I had a horse once in India. His name was Tiber. How would that do? Yeah, don't mean much, but it's your horse. Now, I figured your race is hill about me. I'd ought to put you still a few miles this side of Wyoming territory. I'll set up camp on the road. Take an hour, rest up, rub down the horse, give him some good food. It seemed as though the entire town of Deadwood was at the starting line to see us off. Then came the starting gun, and the race was begun. The foreman's Bill and Hawker Tom brought the race to the rail of gun. Scotty was in the easier place, but was soon out of my mind. Where was plan? I walked Tyler for the first three or four miles, then let him go into an easy lope. Once to adjust the cinch and again to remove a pebble which had lodged in the pony. Two minutes before noon, I saw a very hard thing drawn up at the side of the road. How's it coming? Fine. You caught a horse. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I told you. All right, let's get that pedal off him. All right. Yeah. Hold still, boy, now. Hold still, didn't you? Any sign of the others? Well. Bonnie Reynolds went through about half hour back. Well, they've got a pretty good start, but that don't mean nothing. They ain't going to be better than 60 miles today, not without killing the horses, eh? Where do you plan to camp tonight? Well, it kind of depends on how the enemy will hold up. I think we ought to make Jenny's stockade uh, well, good enough for the first day. How far is that? Well, you've done about 24, 25 miles since the start. Reckon some 30 in a bit to go. When did he take his last water? Now, there's a creek a mile or two further back. Well, uh, you didn't give you too much. Oh, no, no. Uh, that's good. All right. I'll get his oats off on the board. You better get the boat over here. An hour and a half later, I was once more on my way. At one point in the late afternoon, I passed Squatty Reynolds at the Canyon Springs Station. We were traveling on the main route of the Cheyenne and Black Hill stage line. However, an hour later, he overtook me at the gallop. Huh? That night, Wohaw and I camped at Jenny's Stockade. Our first day's journey done. Nearly 60 miles from Deadwood. I tell you, Kendall, we've got to keep our eyes skinned, and that's for a fact. Them other boys ain't more than two or three miles ahead from where I last seen them. Now, they start figuring you for a winner, they won't let it go easy. What do you mean? Well, I mean, there's a lot of money bet on this race, aside from what Fitz Tallman and me had personal bet. Tallman's got a big piece coming if he wins. He aims to win. No telling what he'll try to keep us winning. I see. And I'm just telling you, keep your eyes skinned. You better get some shut eye now, and I'll watch. I want to get Sunday. Monday. Call an all Silver Shroud fans. Although I'd maintained Tiger's steady slow pace, there was no more than five miles to the Memory Den to talk to Ken Conley. We had ridden over 200 miles now, and to this point, my horse had shown little effect. On the other hand, I had once again passed Squatty Reynolds. Galaxy! I had not yet caught up with Wohaw's buckboard and the evening camp which we had planned for Chugwater. I stopped to cross a stream. When from the gathering shadows, I saw two horsemen approach. I made out the sorrow of Jim Gray. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Out there! Somewhere! How's it going, Kendall? Very well, thank you. And with you? All right. Dr. Tom and me, uh, we figured you was close behind. We're waiting for you. Yeah, we surely did. We wanted to have talk with you before you made camp with old Warhol. Oh, right along with me, we can talk together. What we got to say ain't for Warhol here, see? No. Well, you don't need to buy that. My path, he'll make it worthwhile if you take it real easy. And don't try no more to get into it. Of course, you ain't going to know how, because that Lobo Bill, he's got enough left to run that trip of yours clean under the ground. So they... No sense you tried, this. We figured it'd be worth $500 if you could about now. Uh, very generous of you, gentlemen, but I must decline the offer. 
I stand for in front of it more by winning. But you ain't got a chance. Yeah, well, we'll just have to try. That's all. Uh, you wouldn't want no accident to happen to that runty nag of yours, would you? I most certainly wouldn't. Well, I sure hope it does. Come on, Uncle. Sure hope that horse don't break its leg or nothing. The next morning, we managed to steal a march on the Tallens, passing them as they were breaking camp. Wohaw rode along with me for a way in the buckboard. This is the big one today, Kendall. Don't change the pace. Don't rush him. I won't. It's Lobo you gotta watch. He's always got something left in the short range, and I'm thinking he'll have hey, it for this one. Hold up there. Jimmy First time in Blue good up. neighbor? You can't go walking around without insurance. You better back off, or well, you're the one who's going to need insurance. Well, well, hey, all right. We'll just right. say your insurance is paid up for now, okay? We kept plodding on. Someone steps An hour later, Bill Tolman rode up. He was alone. Gas. Threw me an angry laugh. That extortion class. crap. I what do you care? You ain't one so of us. No love for your name, Finn. I said, Miles rolled let him go. The arrest off that went on. You keep letting outsiders walk all over us. One day, to see riders on the road. Man. Someone come out from the Cheyenne to bring us this in. This is me we're talking about. One call about. out to me. That other fellow's not far a mile ahead. Big black yelling. Ain't in good shape. You go get him! No, why do you have to go and say that, huh? At 11 o'clock, I caught up to Warhol again. Here. He was riding at 6 Now miles. I know you had Eight old Finn right. handled back there. Diane's right ahead. Three miles to the depot. Where's Tolman? I'm fine. Thanks for taking care of him. Good. Now don't let this incident take your view of our little community. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome. In the last quarter. Right. Yeah. I feel you. Good. You stay cool. You we caught up the neighborhood. So long as you remember. Mayor Hancock? Too bad about the I saw the black horse I miss him pull away. Super mutant and in another moment, I had myself oh, wow. overtaken the buckboard. What can I do for I became aware of dozens, then hundreds of people lining the streets. What's your story, Hancock? Hancock? My favorite subject. First, I came into this town about it. I was busy making myself a pillar in this community. I go on these wild tears. I was young. Any chems I could find, the more exotic, the better. I finally found this experimental radiation drug. Not one of its kind left, and only one hit. Oh man, the high was so worth it. Yeah, I'm living with the side effects, but hey, what's not to love about immortality? and is now the sole owner of Simmons Livery and Stables in Deadwood, Dakota Territory. I was content You're to a hell of a risk taker, Hancock. We have one dollars. life. Why not a try it all? Me both anyway, did you need something else? Of which I shall write more in my next report. Looking for work. Work, huh? Hmm. I'll tell you what. I got reconnaissance needs. There's a lot of weird talk coming in about a place called the Pickman Gallery. Frontier it's Raider territory up there, but they've been and quiet, by Anthony like Ellis uncomfortable post-coitus quiet. J.B. Kendall. Snoop it out and give me the word. Were Ralph Moody, Jack Moyles, William Allen, Will Scout Wright, out Pickman and Gallery. Perrin. On it. Cool. Be thorough, okay? I'm not paying for a look-see. Find out what's really going on. again next week for another report from the Frontier Gentleman, Bud Sewell speaking.
learn something of courage, integrity, and Indian affairs. This in Deadwood, Dakota Territory. Frontier Gentlemen. an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. In just a moment, we will bring you this latest report from the Frontier Gentlemen. Stars twinkle in the eyes of Mitch Miller every Sunday night over CBS Radio. Every Sunday, a galaxy of the brightest stars in the entertainment firmament shine when they visit Mitch and tell their intimate stories of their lives, their offbeat humorous anecdotes, and the truth about careers which rival fiction. Authors, artists, singers, and musicians, you really <coughs> reach the stars when you oh, join Mitch Miller Sundays over most store. of these stations. And you're not Don't even screaming Don't miss CBS Radio's Mitch Very Miller polite. Show tonight. You let me know if anything catches your fancy. Let's see what you've got. Now, supplies, money, or violence can buy. This is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. A few weeks ago in Deadwood, I had attended the trial of a Sioux policeman named Crow Dog. He had killed a great chief, Spotted Tail, and refused to offer any defense for his crime. The man was convicted and sentenced to hang. When I returned from Cheyenne following the horse race, I found a message at my hotel asking me to call at my earliest convenience on Mr. Harry Cunn, whom I remember to be Crow Dog's attorney. I went immediately to his office. Oh, now it's on. Mr. Kendall? Yes. I recall seeing you at the trial. Oh, exactly. Sit down. Thank you. I understand you're to be uh, congratulated. Oh, <laughs> you mean winning the race? <laughs> well, I was lucky. Well, you made quite a name for yourself between here and Cheyenne. I had good advice and a good horse. Oh, modesty, modesty. <laughs> I shall refrain from embarrassment further. Now, let me see. You're a newspaper correspondent, are you not, Mr. Kendall? As I am. You're the uh, London Times. Yes. I assume that you've attended trials in the past, both here and in England. Several. Well, our procedures are perhaps somewhat crude in comparison to those you have witnessed, but I believe for the most part honest and better than the name of the law. And if you're referring to Crow Dog's trial, I think it was fair, yes. Ah, but justice, it was not, sir. Did you kill the Yes, sir. Yes, you did. But why? Why? Are you suggesting self-defense? The white man's connotation, no. But to a Sioux, to Crow Dog... You didn't mention anything like that. I couldn't. I was honor bound not to. Crow Dog had sworn me to secrecy. In divulging what I believe to be true, you must give me a word of honor to respect the country. Of course, but I don't see that. order to save my client, Mr. Kendall, to put it one way. Perhaps to the use of the newspaper. I must exhaust every possibility to save for it. I'm going short. Well, he was one of the chiefs who went from Washington to the conference in 1870, wasn't he? Exactly. Spotted tail, sitting bull, red cloud, red hair, a dozen more great things. maneuvering to plot, counterplot, jealousies. But suffice to say, uh, there were factions within the Sioux Nation constantly at war with each other, as we know it. Well, I now, don't... Uh, just, uh, uh, bear. We come now to crazy bear. After his captain, Hector's in prison, tried to escape, and his prison, uh, murdered the war. I'm afraid I don't follow you. What does this do with the followers of the father came crazy. Held him while the soldier lay in that the Spotted Tail was an enemy of Crazy Horse? Mm, there are those who say so. The envy, hatred. And Crow Dog killed Spotted Tail for revenge. Huh? It's possible. Was Crow Dog a follower of Crazy Horse? 
know. But you said he swore you to secrecy. He must have told you. Oh, that. he told me nothing. All that I have stated is surmise. But I had reasons to see that it was close enough to the truth. I, uh, I took it to go on and suggested that we use it in his defense. You, did he admit that it was true? He denied nothing, admitted nothing. All that he would say was that were such a defense to be used, it would rekindle the flames of jealousy, even war between the nations. And he still wouldn't tell you why he killed Scottishman. No. Perhaps inadvertently I'd stumbled on the reason. Now, according to Sue Custom, Crow Dog made a settlement with the relative of the dead man. But because of Scottish Tail's importance, the government decided to prosecute Crow Dog. When is the day of execution? Well, sir, unless my plea for a stay is allowed, next week, Monday. Do you think of the fact that these that you believe them to be, if they were known, it would make a difference? No, it might. But even were I to send my story to London, it would be weeks, even months before it could be. Oh, I realize that. But I thought that uh, you might have some influence with the authorities in uh, Washington. Oh, no, no, not the slightest. Now, the only thing I can suggest is that you try to make Crow Dog tell the truth as to why he killed Spotted Tail. I'm afraid it's useless. He's not afraid to Where die. Where'd that little fucker go? In fact, he'd rather do so than to bold whatever reason he had for the case. I don't think it would be much use, at least not the Crow Dog, but I should very much like to see him. Well, I'll give you the one class. If you'll talk to me, there's always a possibility that something will slip out. I'll go down and see John Moulton. He's the jailer. A fair man. I'm sure he'll consent to the end. The next evening, accompanied by Mr. Plum, I went to the jail. There, met John Moulton. He gave me permission for us to be <coughs> I wish to get all the prisoners. I won't lie to you. Has he talked to you much, John? No, sir. Just blind you, though. I'm going to make his last day comfortable. These fine evenings, I didn't leave to sit around in the courtyard. He's got called to leave a man locked up while he waits to die. I don't think he's he might try to escape. I asked him to give his word on that. He gave it, and I trust him. Well, you'll be a fuck. Oh, uh, Mr. Kendall, uh, on second thought, I think perhaps it would be best if I went present when you were uh, interviewed him. Oh, I might not say anything at all, then. Tell him that I sent you. We're good friends. I mentioned that we discussed. As a last resort, yes. Although he'll know how to accomplish, but you feel it would be helpful by all means, yes. After all, sir, I am trying to save his life. I'll, uh, just wait for you. Do you ever say, I have a good memory for faces, but names? Well then, how about recognizing voices? Could you identify a famous personage just by his voice? That's what Morning Amsterdam, Orson Bean, Dagmar, and Ralph Story will try to do today on Says Who. Maybe you can place the voice before the channel does when CBS Radio brings you Says Who over most of these stations. In any case, you can place the laughter because it'll be yours as you enjoy the sallies of the panel presided over by Henry Morgan on Says Who. Today, on many of these same stations. That's his Pikmin psycho. The slippery bastard got him. The strain of waiting for execution. The slab won't leave a man breathing. You get a fucking pay for that! A worn blanket wrapped about his shoulders, watching the lengthening shadows engulf the sunlit wall of the courtyard. As he approached, he looked up and got to his feet, standing quietly. Little God damn it! Kendall. Writes on a newspaper a long, long way off, over the big seas. A place called England. Maybe a friend of Mr. Plum. You? You are a friend of Mr. Plum? Yes. I said I'd like to talk to you. Thought that you wouldn't mind. Not to shit! I not to mind. Ah, leave you all. Come on back to the office when you see. Right. Man, please don't get barrels again. Mr. Plum in good health? Yes. I not see him these past days. 
Sir. He's working very hard to get you a stay of execution. He not be able to. I will die. Where did you learn to speak such good English, Crow Dog? Many places. I was interpreter between chiefs and soldiers. I learned more on reservation and when I become policeman. I was at your trial, yes. and I've often wondered why you give no reason for what you did. Not right here. The sun is almost gone. It becomes cool. We will walk if you not mind. Mm, not at all. These walls, almost every day I see them. They grow closer to me. The courtyard is smaller. Have you got a family, Crow Dog? Yeah, family. Many relations. They are on reservation. Have they come to see you? No. This is a shame that cannot be. The right man's prison is not a good place for family. Oh. It's better for them to see me, remember me in other places at other times. You did kill Spotted Tail, didn't you? Yeah, I kill him. Do you think Mr. Plum is right in trying to save you from hanging? I kill as a Sioux. This is a thing no white man can understand. Keep your eyes open. Now, I, think his I is die in, in the white man's way. A thing no yeah. Sioux understands. If you could go free, would you tell the truth as to why you Time killed... Time to reel him in! It was a thing between us for no other <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Klum give his word to me. He has broken it. He wants to save you. He thought I might be able to help you. When he gave his word, I trusted him as I would trust few white men. You can still trust him. The time for him to have broken his word was at the trial. He didn't do so. You can't blame him because he wants to help you now before it's too late. He think what he wishes about Crazy Horse. I have nothing to say. Will you tell Mr. Molson there's a chill? I am ready to go inside. Yes. I wish I could do something to help you, Proton. There is no need. I thank you. Goodbye. <coughs> I figured you'd have been longer. Uh, he said he was getting cold, wanted to go back inside. Yeah, I'll take care of it. <laughs> Right back. Well, Mr. Kendall, would he say anything? No. Nope. You mentioned Crazy Horse? Yes, I think it was a mistake. He seemed to feel worse about you breaking your word than the fact that he was going to hang. Uh, perhaps it was wrong, I don't know. It was a small hope at best. Except now I suppose he feels that he's lost his last friend. On what grounds have <coughs> you applied for a steer? Flimsy, <coughs> weak. If the government is determined that he shall hang, and I'm afraid they are, there's no chance. I based it upon the fact that he had satisfied tribal law by paying the settlement. That if tribal custom forbade him giving just and good reason for his act, that in itself is mitigating circumstance, calling for a new trial. You know, from what I've seen out here, Mr. Clum, it must be very difficult to enforce your laws on the Indians. Oh, for both sides, sir, for both sides. We, to impress our wills, pay to... And why we do it. Crow Dog said something like that when I was talking. I sometimes wonder whether we're right, sir. We cheat, we lie to them, we kill them, and then under the guise of Christianity, of civilization, we bring them to trial because they dare to emulate. Where is he? Crow Dog. Don't lie. Don't He's not there no more. Cuss a stuck egg dog. That's a word. I might have known. Never trust an Indian. He's gone over the wall. Just get started. Seven nights a week is The World Tonight, summarizing the state of the world and peace around it. Lighting up the day's top features, frequently pinpointing the humor and the human interest underlying the day's top news. The World Tonight is the perfect way to finish your day fully informed. Listen tonight on CBS Radio for The World Tonight, coming your way on most of these same stations.
A posse of deputies was hurriedly rounded up. They searched Deadwood and the outlying areas throughout the entire night, but Crow Dog had disappeared. The next morning, Mr. Clum and I were called down to John Molson's jail office. Another man was seated, obviously waiting for us. He chewed on a sliver of wood and had an odd habit of keeping his head lowered and watching us under the brim of his hat. His name was Dean Geddes. His badge proclaimed him a deputy marshal. I hear you do candles in the last That's there, right. Will. Give you any idea what he had in mind? Not that I can think of. Well, now there's an important government prison escape. My job's to get him back for hanging. Ain't that so, Molson? Yeah. So if that engine said anything to you, maybe give us an idea where he's going. Well, that's what I want to hear about. Sorry, I can't help you. Well, what'd you talk about? His trial, well, guy me, huh? or lack of it. I guess he told you he's innocent. They always are. No, as a matter of fact, no, he didn't. He spoke of his family. I asked if they visited him. He said no. He didn't want them to see him. Come on. I'll give you odds just where he's going, then. Are you ready to reach? Sure. The biggest arrest of his kind will hide him out. Well, don't worry, Molson. I'll bring him back by hand in day. Well, would you object to my road with you? Ah. I'm sorry, Mr. Kendall. It's government business. Well, I'm an inventor. I'm going to write a report on this, and I'd rather get my information first hand than to write what I'll have to imagine. Oh, you see. All right with me if the marshal says so. We'll have to see him first. <laughs> The marshal was impressed with my credentials and had heard about my race from Deadwood to Cheyenne. I was given permission to accompany Geddes to the reservation. We left that afternoon. Is that the horse you won the race with? Yes. Don't look like he could have done it. He did. You can't have it. How come you're so interested in that engine, Crow Dog? I must find out why he killed Spotted Tail. And after meeting him, I'd rather not see him hang. Well, mister, you being English and all, I guess you don't know about these people. I guess I'm being soft in the head to call them people, savages, near to animals or not. So you want to fight him? I might do it once or twice. You want to see what they do, folks? Something's out there. Women, children? <coughs> not pleasant. Of course, I'm with you on one thing. It don't seem to matter if an engine scalps another, but they got to learn the law. Keep them on the reservation and teach them the law. It's the only way. The only way for what? For peace. Like them in war. Where'd that little fucker go? Away. Cover fire over here! Now you take this crow dog like it's not. He's got himself good and drunk by now. Maybe he's done some more killing. Next thing you know, he'll up and fight man. Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. You go, huh? I see the raising party fresh off the reservation. Why do you think they do it? Why? I'm telling you. Any mistake we made in signing the peace, we should have killed all the last one. Hey, you! Do you mind if I, I ask you something? Day. Why? Why do you hate Indians so much? The war party of soup killed my wife and two kids five years ago. I'm <laughs> reason enough for you. His face livid, Geddes spurred his head forward and on. That was the He didn't talk to each other, there wasn't anything to say. He was a man of determination of Indians. For many reasons, I had no inclination to argue with him. Two days later, we arrived at the reservation. Our presence was greeted with hostile silence, and it was some time before we gained the information as to where we could find the family lodge of Crow Dog. When we reached it, there was not a soul in sight. They knew we was coming, we were ten miles off. Finally got, got you, got Crow Dog hiding out. Well, I wouldn't want to bet. Thought you could hunt and torture our people first. to your heart's content? Better keep your gun handy. You ain't beyond taking a scalp when there's a chance. Joy killing you. Huh? Mr. Kendall. Crow dog. Look at the city. 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 Look at the 
law. If you try and stop me, I'll put it right between your eyes. I've come back here to say goodbye to family. <laughs> I return to Deadwood and the hanging. Okay, now. Red Lay man, off! Damn it! You are on reservation. There are many Indians here. You kill me, it does not matter. I must die, as your law has said. But kill that me was here. Close. And you and Mr. Kendall Thank will you. both die. Those and people deserve worse than Listen to what he's saying, Geddes. Don't be a fool. Mr. Kendall, I give my Why word. did they want you so badly? I go back. A small disagreement. I believe you. They objected to my hobby of I don't feel like dying heads. because you want to Let kill this man. I'd rather take his word. Stinking Indian. What did you have in mind? Stinks a gift. Well, it don't matter to me. Nothing more. If, won't come if you visit my house again, catch up with look deep within my I'll painting, not. Picnic for Stanley, and you will find you my go gratitude. Too, Mr. Kendall. You'll need yes. this. I trust you, Crowdog. I want you to know that Mr. Plum and I both trust you. We don't feel the way that it does. When I have said farewell, Free for the taking. I go back. Geddes didn't return to Deadwood with me. He stopped at a stage station and proceeded to get very drunk. I stayed with him for a day, then decided to go on alone. Mr. Plum wasn't in his office when I rode into Deadwood, so I went down to the jailhouse. He was there, with Molson and a third man, Crow Dog. How are you, Kendall? Where's Geddes? Oh, he'll be here later, a little trouble with his horse. Oh. Hello, Crow Dog. Glad to see you safe, Mr. Kendall. I'm glad to see you, Crow Dog. You not expect to, huh? I'm not sure I would have blamed you. In white man's eyes, I was a murderer. You must live as the white man tells us. So, I'll come back. Then you'd better return at once to the reservation, Crow Dog. Yes, I go. Go? What, what are you talking about? A pardon, Mr. Kendall. While he was gone, a pardon came. Old dog was a free man. Mr. Clum was never able to find out just why the pardon had been granted. Perhaps it was in part due to his eloquent appeal, and then again, the Indian agency and an injustice had been done. It didn't really matter. For whatever reason, Crow Dog had gone home. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, Joseph Kearns, Stacey Harris, and Jack Moy. again next week for another report from the Frontier Gentleman, Bud Sewell speaking. hills of Dakota Territory, I met a lovesick miner and got bitten by the gold bug. Frontier 
gentlemen. Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. In just a moment, we will bring you this latest report from the Frontier Gentlemen. Seven nights a week on CBS Radio, most of these stations present The World Tonight. On the world tonight, a CBS newsmen broadcast direct from where the news is developing, along with well-detailed eyewitness reports on current events. The world tonight brings you lively interviews with people in the news. When big things are happening in London, Moscow, Paris, Tokyo, or Rome, they're all within speaking distance on the world tonight. <laughs> Starring Good John name, huh? Daner, yeah. this is the story Stone of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. Cleo. Hey. I've got a weapon here for every situation. Uh-huh. Sure, let's take a look. Each weapon tested on someone who deserved it. The town of Deadwood is built between a canyon wall and a river. As with so many other products of a gold rush, it has attracted the best and the worst of humanity. The enticements being many and varied from opium dens to gambling halls and saloons. Morning and night, the long main street fairly roars. And the sound carries many a mile into the Black Hills to be heard by some half-starved, grizzled prospector down on his luck. I had gone into the same hills in order to write my impressions of gold mining in this area. It was the evening of my second day when I wandered into the camp of two men. Their diggings were in a hillside a few yards from their fire. Evening, mister. Good evening. Any luck? Uh, no. Uh, had you grub? Not yet, I... Well, shake yourself. <laughs> Ain't no fancy fixing. Got us some dough meat and splatter to have, if that'll do you. Well, it's very kind of you, but I don't want to... Heck, ain't no trouble. Rest your saddle, mister. <laughs> Thank you. This here gut robber, he's Frank Twist. I'm Charlie Longball. J.B. Kendall. Yeah, How do you do? Know you. Uh, may I contribute to the meal? Sure. Oh, uh, ain't got any sweetening, have you? Yes. Jam. Sugar. Jam. Oh, jam. That'll go just fine on them splatter dabs. See, we run out of sugar three weeks back. Uh, the belly wash just so long. Makes. I've been putting Can't get enough of... in it to get some taste. I've out. got a few <laughs> minutes to browse. Everything's guaranteed uh, to last. Hmm. Until it doesn't. Uh huh. Here. Yeah. Oh, now that's mighty friendly, Mister. Sure, you can Whoever spare it. Oh yeah. Hey, hey Daisy. I am done with China. That's the truth. Chances. I haven't. I'm a writer. Got any work? I do actually. Around, Super mutants have taken over the old sure. Boston Public you Library. Yeah. I got a lot of fond memories of that place from when I was a girl. If I found some, I you wouldn't get mind those the lumbering brutes out of there. No, I'll pay you two hundred caps. I admire that. I surely you got do. a deal, what Daisy. About you fellows? Thanks. Hey, while you're there, right could you return now. this book we for me? It. It's you from the library. Don't more even more ask course, how long it's been bad, overdue. But there's fellas cleaning up better than fifty a ton hereabouts. Don't uh, don't pay to waste time on hungry ore. Mm. You both miners. Well, Frank is. Real old gristle heel. Ain't that right, Frank? I allowed it so. Me? <laughs> I was a cowpuncher driving cows up to Cheyenne from Fort Worth. Heard about the gold, come on over. Well, I see well, that was uh, a couple of years back. Good Met up with Frank, we got to be partners. Ain't that so, Frank? Yeah. And, mister, you ain't never seen Frank in, so in all your born days. The first time you went to Cannon, I liked him. Hey, everyone. Oh. Gather around. Let's young Let's kick the weed back. Keep the fat. Right your fist. Now, I know you all are doing your own thing, gold, gold, but I don't want anyone... Drowned it himself. You know, I pumped the gallon of water hey, out Daisy, of glad you can make it. Oh, How's my favorite girl? After that, yeah. I did. Oh, Seen I did. Sure I'll ski the other day. <laughs> he wishes. <laughs> I don't think you down to dead. All right, all right. We're Two days getting ago. off track. What was I saying? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. What matters? You, uh, we freaks go gotta to stick together. The and the best way to stick together front, is to keep an eye out for what so, drives no. us apart. 
You feel me? Frankie's yeah, got a girl like with the is, green front. Him now, and hundred other the boys. out there in our big friendly commonwealth? When I say I got a girl, that's what I say. Us apart. What kind of twisted, our neighborly boogeyman would want to hurt our peaceful community? That's right. Who said that? Coming up to my office later. You've earned yourself some shot. The Institute. They're the real enemy. Not the well, Raiders, be not the super mutants, yeah, not even those tools water. over in Diamond Watch City. Uh, I don't know, Hank. Uh, sure, Frank, sure. Yes. Hey, we all know I got my own personal yeah, beef I with that one. Right but stay focused. I now I want everyone to keep the Institute in mind. When someone starts acting funny. When people are doing things they don't normally do. When family starts pushing you away for no reason. We all know who's behind that kind of shit. And the only way to stop it is to stick together. They can't control us if we're not afraid. Now, who's scared of the Institute? Not us! And which town in the Commonwealth should the Institute not fuck with? And who's in charge of good neighbor? Of the people, for the people. It irons me good, I tell you. Hey, Hancock, how's my little scout doing? You find out what's happening at Pickman Gallery? You know all she God, it was awful. Me, Charlie. You know Hickman was a serial it. killer. He was using any, dead bodies for his him high inside too, art. Oh, oh, seriously? That's left. messed up. Even for Hold this town. Thing. I'll put the word out to avoid that place. Good work. You ended up in the abyss, but you crawled That's back in trouble. one piece. Here's your money. Doesn't he know that she doesn't care about him? Shit. He don't see nothing. She gives him one of them big-eyed skid grease smiles. He's a goner. Well, I'm afraid there's not much you can do about it. You take my advice, Charlie. Charlie. You'll just... Charlie! What? Charlie! What? What's the matter? Charlie! Here you, boy. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look at this oil up there, my balls of yarn, and look. Holy suffering wushy. You ever see anything like that? Where'd honey? you find it, Frank? Where? Oh, it's pure. It's like I never seen in my whole days. Pure gold. Now, I've seen a lot of crazy gold. stuff. Frank, yo. <laughs> Frank, yo, Hooters, slow down for you. Bust your gut. Where'd you find it? I'll show you. Down the side of the creek. I'll show you. Come on, it's worth millions, Charlie Can't boy. Millions. Just like Savage. Sure as hell, bring that one. Right now, your GMC dealer is inviting every truck owner and every truck buyer to make his own value test. Compare what you get with well, what you pay well, for when you buy Mr. any truck Valentine, on the market. Then see if you don't I agree you a GMC wins me. on value. That a truck built GMC gives you more for your money. Here's a sample of a real bargain. Your GMC may have walked out of the den or not, but a brand I new 1958 GMC hmm. truck for I'm stop and go delivery work, complete with package flat. delivery body, at a price that's less than you'd have paid for the same vehicle a year ago. And here's another bargain. Today's brand new pickup with 22 extra quality features at no extra cost, priced right down with the lowest. When it comes to trucks. Remember, GMC, the quality name in trucks, wins any price value showdown. See your GMC dealer now. Dr. Amari? Yes, I take it this isn't a social. In the gathering twilight, hey, we stumble, race I'm down the slope toward the creek. Then a few yards from the bottom of the hill, Frank Twist stopped, put a shaking hand we on need the top of the rock. And we I saw need the memories from a man named Kellogg. He ain't gonna but he's dead. He ain't gonna I know it's asking for a miracle, Amari. Look at that. You've pulled off the impossible baby. before. Are you, you two mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking <laughs> you me to defile a corpse, you, know? oh, you don't realize that the memory boy. simulators require intact, living brains to, to, to function. Get rid of Bucket got caught on her crack and pulled loose. Please. But Nick told me you're the only one who can make this old. work. This that dead brain old. had inside that knowledge of the Institute, the Amari. Boys, the biggest scientific that's secret that's of the Commonwealth. Wait, wait, you wait, need wait, this, wait, 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 and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Is it part of your claim? Well, sure it is, ain't it, Frank? Well, I reckon it is. 
You reckon? Well, we Here's off, right? what I could find. Diggins, don't it come down this far? What's this? Right this here. isn't a brain. Because... This is... Wait, that's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Yeah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Oh, I'd be very happy to. Go on, Doctor. Mr. Valentine is an older generation synth. But Institute technology being what it is, the brain implant we searched for some mark of ownership. But that's a an of incredible rock, risk to take. But We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about, about me, Amari. And then started I'm well past the warranty Charlie's date anyway. Campfire, a look of grim determination on his face. A shotgun across his knee. You really think this will work, Nick? No idea. It was well past we got a missing kid on the line. Register the claim that's that worth the, the risk. Closed. It wouldn't open until six in the morning. Just sit down. Hey. I sure do hate to let that claim sit like that with only the young fella up there. There's no use worrying about it, Frank. You can't do anything until morning anyway. Well, you're right, JB. You're darn right. Tell you what, Rick, you and me celebrate. Drinks on me. Bella Union's just down the way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a long night, but worth it. Because in the morning, we're going to be millionaires. <laughs> The Bella Union was probably the most disreputable, lowest den of iniquity in all of Deadwood. Its whiskey was foul, and the beer, sir, I have heard best described by cowpunchers when speaking of shallow pools of water in which cattle had been standing, green, stagnant. The whiskey being the lesser of the evils, I nursed mine along, Let's see. which is more than I can say for Frank Twist. Give me another shot of that fine red disturbance. Yes. He had consumed three quarters of a bottle and seemed none the worse for it. Are you At about three o'clock, my companion turned a somewhat reddened eye on me, hit him, put his arm on my shoulder, and said, There's a lock on the memory, reason. You're drunk. I'm sorry. What do you need a drink? I have one. Thank you. When Tell I me you have a way past this, Doctor. Uh, Let me think. In your hand, Frank. The encryption is too strong for a single mind. Let's go see Sweet but Mary. Down what if green. we used to? Well, uh, we load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory line. Remember? Run your cognitive functions in hell. He'll act as a host, she, me, while your she, consciousness she, drives she, through whatever memories we can find. Sweetest little gal in Deadwood. Marry her in the morning. Come on. Right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there. We made our way down the street. Fingers to the fingers crossed. Front. The saloon was a good deal Same quieter the than the Bella Union, but for an entirely different reason. Several ladies of assorted ages and varying degrees of decay were present, and with them, seated drinking at tables, their consorts. Frank Twist dragged me across the room. There she is! Mary! Mary! Initiating one migration between the transplant and the host. Oh, 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 Uh, come on, Frank, you, you don't want to... Hey, there, it's old man Quinn. Yeah. Are you talking to me, you rancho old son of a gun? You hear it? Mary, hold my drink. Here, honey. Uh, now, now uh, forgive the intrusion, but my friend is rather Can drunk. you hear me? Doesn't mean... What do you mean, I oh, don't good. mean... The simulation appears to be working, although the memories of that fragment I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. Frank. 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 There. This is the earliest nice intact memory I can find. Got a feeling you busted Porky colored in his nose. Here you got a pretty color of blood, ain't it? Frank. He gave his head a hit on the table and Porky hit him. He ain't gonna wake up for a while. 
you sit down and have a drink with me, stranger? Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in her way. And she protected me from Dad. <laughs> that cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not that. Is that what I think it is? Gold. Where? In the hills. Sure, in the hills, but where? Let me see. Oh, richest I've seen. This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. You and him. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. Sure. You bet. Sit down, Mr. It's going to be fun. Honey? You'll see. Sit down. Let we don't know anybody here. Lay. And now, I mean, with we'll the baby? Him when he wakes Come up. on, Sarah, you've got to give it a chance. Yeah, I want you to tell me all about you. I finally got steady work with a good outfit. Where'd you say you found the gold? Nothing like that in the NCR these days. I'm not saying this was a mistake. This fall, we're conducting just... one of the biggest talent searches in our Are you history. Sure these guys know what we're they're doing? We're trying to find the most they gifted men available green. to run the country. I know. But that's where I come candidates in. who can guide us through the perilous days ahead in with wisdom and years, I'll be running my own crew. How do we find these soon as I make the connections, I who will be our next congressmen, judges, governors, and mayors? Give you anything find you out want. just what they believe in. And little Mary, too. After the eliminations in the primaries, we hold the finals for. of this great talent Must be my mama in November. Kicking in. We are the judges, and anyway, our decision is final. One. Come on, but you're vote, great with her. You must register first. And you don't need to worry then, about me. Then, in the November election, most of it's just running security for the she. A lot of standing around, looking tough. Well, they sure picked the right person for that job. Listen, it's gonna be great here. Miss, See this? Uh, this is what's Mary, gonna keep I you and Mary safe. Her Draped I herself promise. around me like an anaconda. I know. Every now and again, she patted my pockets. I'm sure we're gonna be really happy here. Up. But the gold nugget was we still are. there. You'll see. There's nothing subtle about her. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, no, I, I never deserved her. Not for one second. Uh, at the moment, the furthest thing from my mind. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. You don't like me. You shatter me. Mr. Twist likes me. He loves me. He told me. Yes, I know. He'd marry me. I suppose he would. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? Imagine him wanting to marry me. It is hard to imagine. <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs, and you weren't there to help them. you figure that I found another memory to try. I'll connect you. Million. Would you like for me to sit in your lap? No, thank you. What's the matter? Don't you like women? On well, the contrary, I'm very fond of them. Oh, it's me then. I eat your kind. Mary, Mind why do you want to marry me? I didn't care where I was going. Mine, ain't you? Yeah. Ended up mostly wandering east. Simple as that. Getting as far away from San Francisco I as I could, I maybe. You know, like your socks and all. Suit yourself. Yeah, I guess maybe because I've been working in a place like this, I ain't the wife you'd be wanting. Is that it? If I were in love with you, Mary, so it wouldn't um, matter where you were. I hear you'll take yeah, care I'd of me. I'd like people's. to find a man like you. Oh. Settle Tell down. Me. Wouldn't even have if to have a million me. dollars. Oh, just just oh, enough, oh, you know. We'll pay you. Yeah, I think so. And uh, you'll do this. Oh, your erstwhile so. friend is coming to. That's right. Huh? Uh, gentleman we pay with you. the wounded I nose. Just is that okay? Porky, you better get out of That's here. That's the way you want to do it. What's your name, sweetheart? Kendall. A poor so my fiancee, Mr. Kendall, let some well, more air out of you. It's here. like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek. Well, come you didn't tell we seem to be getting closer. Fiancee. Try this I next one. I tell a hill rat like you nothing. He ain't going to talk like that if my claim turns out rich. Rich? Culligan, you couldn't find enough pay dirt in your whole life. Mr. Kellogg, Kendall got right I'm glad there you decided to meet with me. The first sets weren't all that impressive. Hey, you, you hit it hard. I'm good, but I'm not so. that good. Well, now, 
But the Institute could always make more, and kept making them better each time. They still give me the creeps, but you have to get used to them if you want to work with the Institute. But a half an so, hour later, I woke up, you're with the my head Institute. pillowed in Mary's lap. I want to see for Chris myself if you really over existed. Me. And behind him, the rodent-like features of Stoke, as you can the see. green front proprietor. What do you want? Kendra. It's you come to right? my attention Kendra. that you've been rather oh, disruptive God, of our dead. operations lately. There. So did I. This must stop. What call you got I do what people pay me to do. I can call him if that's a problem for you, I can see only gold, one way out. Off out of here like had a and what's that, his... Mr. Kellogg? Gold? Yeah. I'm working for you. Right out of your There's no more problem. Stop. No matter, none can. You know what There's I hear, you can afford me. Oh, well, uh, I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B748. Come on, Initiate. I never knew why we didn't just refreeze the rest of them. But we had our orders. We left the forlorn miss of the green. Guess the old man didn't want so many loose ends. Frank Twist was Too bad he left alive the one person he shouldn't have. Until six, and then the office opened. The agent took our claim. All computers were still working. Began to go through his That's files. Good. You know, I'm mighty glad, mighty glad I found 